When it comes to making progress in the gym, we can look at research studies, experiments, mechanisms for growth, progressive overload, yada, yada, yada. We can really just quantify everything. But there's an intangible aspect that I think is not talked about often enough. And these are what I like to call the three I's. Not these kind of I's, but the letter I. And the first one is intent. Now, when you go into the gym, do you have the end goal in mind? And what I mean by this is, are you able to visualize exactly where you wanna go with that specific muscle that you're training on that day? Can you see it? Are you training in the muscle, as I like to call it? And if that sounds confusing, it just simply means that set for set, rep for rep, you are actually physically and mentally in that muscle in the moment and experiencing that contraction, the negative aspect, all of it, you are taking yourself to almost failure on every single set. And this will boost your muscle activation and science has shown this, but it also will make you mentally tired in addition to physically tired at the end of the workout. So just ask yourself that, are you training with intent? Are you able to really just visualize and really get to that point of fatigue mentally and physically? I've got my, my trusty notebook here so I don't ramble on and on. The next I is intuition. Now, I know most of us go off of programs, but there is a way to achieve progressive overload by feeling your way through it. Are you able to go into the gym and on a certain day you're feeling on, you're able to lift heavy, you're able to really max out and push yourself really hard. And on certain days, you know that you just don't have what it takes to give it 100%, but you're able to give it 100% in other ways. So maybe you train for the pump, maybe you train to failure on isolation movements, and you're not really taxing yourself or your central nervous system as much, and you train by feel. And if you haven't ever done this, I encourage you to take a couple of weeks and just really work through it because your body is amazing at giving you that feedback. And it's not a matter of motivation, right? It's not like, oh, I don't wanna go train. This goes beyond that. This is just body feel, being able to go into a gym, know that there are days when you can really push yourself hard and you've got it. And there are some days where you don't, but you know that you're gonna continue to make progress because even on those days that you don't, you have the intuitive feeling that you can just push yourself to that point of fatigue that is a little bit harder than it was last week, thus achieving progressive overload without keeping track and, and really quantifying things. And I've trained like that for a number of years. I will have my core set of exercises, but on certain days I'll go in and I will vary from that a little bit. Um, and what I mean is instead of doing a certain type of shoulder press, I will do a, a different type of shoulder press. Maybe I'm not feeling so great. I'm not going to go heavy on the overhead press. I might do a Y press with a slow negative, or I might add some pause reps in or some pulses or just slow negatives and really achieve fatigue and get close to failure that way. Um, versus trying to max out completely when I knew my head and my, my heart is not in it on that day. And the last I, and that is for intensity. Now, it is not possible to go into the gym and train at 100% every single day. And this is just life, right? So if you're able to train with intensity once or twice per week on one to two exercises, you're going to get a lot further because I believe that training does require a certain amount of intensity. And this does not mean that you have to go in and squat and try to hit a PR every single week. It's not about that. It is about finding the exercise that you're able to go 100% on, that you feel really comfortable with. Maybe that's a kettlebell swing. Maybe you're going to get on a spin bike and you're going to do three or four all out sprints, if you will, for 10 to 20 seconds. But I really want you to think about hitting those fast switch muscles, which have a tendency to decline as we age. So we do have that tendency to lose muscle. If you're watching this channel, you're already lifting weights. So 
you, you've kind of nipped that in the bud, but I want you to consider the fast twitch muscles and training with intensity. It might be going on leg press and giving it your all for five or six reps. This is not one rep max type thing. We're still talking about hypertrophy, but really focus on intensity. And again, do it when you feel it. Um, you know, base it on intuition. You've been eating well, maybe you've got enough carbs in you, you've got a good night's sleep. Just go in on that first exercise of the day after you're nice and warm and give it all you got. Push yourself safely, of course. So are you training with your eyes or are you simply sticking to sets and reps in a rigid structure? And I, I think that a combination of the two is really the best way to do it. You know, you wanna think, but you also wanna feel because your body is going to let you know if you're on the right track and you know, if it's a, a good burn, a good pain, you know, you wanna push through it and you wanna push a little bit harder every single week as you're going through your block or your mesocycle until you get to that point where you're starting to fatigue, you know, maybe motivation wanes, then you're gonna take your deload and you're gonna start back with a little bit less in terms of volume, a little bit less in terms of weight, but you're gonna ramp up quickly. So over the years, you get progressively stronger and you're able to achieve much, much more than you would had you just stuck to the, the book, if you will. All right, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you wanna see next. I love you guys. Keep training hard. Keep training hard with your brain and your heart. I'll see you soon. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.